Okay, so we can go ahead and apply the cardinal properties to some examples so we can see. Of course, we can always use a Venn diagram as well. So we're going to kind of combine both and see which you like at your groove and then decide. So in this one, it just is very simple. It's like, uh, okay, an uh, set A contains 48 elements. The set B contains 56. Sets A and B have 25 in common. And um, we need to find the total number of elements in either set A or set B. So notice the language here, either a set A or B. So we can recall that the word or corresponds to the union. So we're trying to find the union, and that's because of the word or. So we're, we need to find the number of elements, and notice it says those words, number of elements. Right away you know it's cardinality. So the number of elements in set A or B, meaning A union B. Okay, so there's a couple of ways we can do this, um, right? So if we use the cardinality properties above, we would see that we could use property one to find the union, the cardinality of the union. So if we need the number of elements in A union B, that would just be equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the intersection. So right away they tell us set A contains 48 elements and set B contains 56. However, sets A and B have an intersection. So the moment I add them, I'm adding the intersection twice, right? There's a double dipping happening. So I need to remove one of the intersections and I can't double dip. So I have to remove um, the how many sets they have in common. So if A, and then I just want you to notice the words and because A and B means the intersection. Remember the word and related to intersection and the word or related to union. So if I subtract the number of elements they have in common, that would be 25. So if I add 48 and 56, subtract the double dipping, I would get 79. So the number of elements in A or B is 79. So here, if I wanted to draw the Venn diagram, with two circles, and here's A and B, and here's the universe. Okay, so then, set A, the intersection, I'm sorry, would have 25. So that means set A has uh, 48, but 48 includes this intersection of 25. So if I want to find what's only in set A, right, this little piece minus the intersection, I'll just take 25 and subtract it from 48 and then I get the ones isolated only set A and not in the intersection. So that would be 23. And then you can see that the entire set A is 23 plus 25, which is 48. So same with set B. We know there's 56 elements in set B, but 25 of those elements are shared with A, right? They're in the intersection. So let me subtract 25 from 56 so that I get um, 31. And then we can see the entire set B, 25 plus 31, is the 56. Okay, so that's what it would look like in a Venn diagram. We don't know how many set uh, elements in the entire universal set, but at least we can see like visually the formula versus the picture. Okay, so moving on, let's try another example with elementary school teachers. So one school has 69 teachers, another school has 97 teachers, but sometimes if, you know, they're part-time, they work at both schools. And so we could see the teachers at both school is 
141. So we could see that not all teachers that work at Albers um, teach at Bothell and vice versa. So we want to see how many teachers teach at both schools. So we want to see of these 69 and 97, how many do teach at both? When we do know that all together, all these teachers teach 100, there's 141 teachers. Okay, so if we want to see what teaching at both schools, this means we want to see the number of teachers that teach at Albers and Bothell. So right away we see and, and we think of intersection. So the first thing we need to identify is we need to find a uh, intersection B. And we want to find the number. So because we're asking how many teachers, we want to know one number, not listing the teachers, we want to know the total numbers of teachers. So we need to find the number of teachers in, that are teaching at both schools. So if we go back up to the properties, we would see property three is just like a mix of property one, where we isolated the cardinality of the intersection. So let's go ahead and write down this formula. So the number of elements in the intersection would be equal to the number of elements in the first elementary school plus the number of elements in the second elementary school minus our union. So we do see that the number of teachers at Albers is 69. And the number of teachers at Bothell's is 97. And the number of teachers combined is 141. That means the teachers that teach at Albers only, Bothell only, and then both. So we'll subtract 141. So if I added 69 and 97 and then subtracted the union, I would get 25. So only 25 teachers teach at both schools. So you can see how valuable those properties are. However, I always have students that love the Venn diagrams, and I think knowing how to identify both is really important. So here's Albers, and here's Bothell, and here's the universal set. So I know like the whole union is 141, but here I know that 69 is in A, right? And 25 is in the intersection from what I just did, right? So 25 is in the intersection, but if 69 is in the entire set A and 25 of them are working at both schools, then the teachers that are only working at Albers would be 69 minus 25. And so that would be um, 44. All right, and so the same rationale for B um, here. B is 97 teachers teach at Bothell, but 25 of those 97 teach at both Bothell and Albers. So then we can see how many teachers only teach at Bothell by subtracting 25 from 97. So there it would be 72. Yep. So if I added these all up, right, um, 44 plus 25 plus 72, that would give you the 141 in the entire union. So that's what it would look like as a Venn diagram. So I don't know, it just depends on your learning. Some students like the consistency of the formula and just finding the pieces. Sometimes just doing a Venn diagram is faster. Like I felt it in the first example we did in the section. Just really up to you. Um, in this last example, we have um, another uh, situation, right, context, where we have pet owners and we have 95 pet owners. So now they're telling you that, now they're telling you the number of people in the survey. Now they're saying, no matter what, what kind of pet you own, we're going to take 95 pet owners 
and we're going to survey whether you have a cat or dog or both. So people sometimes have neither, right? They have rabbits, they have snakes, they have um, pigs, right? So sometimes it's totally out of a cat and dog. So we're going to have, this one's going to be a little nicer because we're going to have that amount that we have surveyed and then how many didn't own a cat or dog and how many own a cat or dog, a cat and then a dog and then both and things like that. So in this case, we own, not of the 95 that were surveyed, 15 of them said they owned a dog and 69 said they own a cat. 13 said they owned both. So how many own neither a cat nor a dog? So notice neither, so they don't, they want the, the pet owners that do not own a cat or dog. So if cat or dog is our subsets of you, we want everything outside of it. We want to see how many people are owning everything but a dog and a cat, right? Okay, so here, right, we need, so neither a cat nor a dog. That means if I do C for cat, D for dog, and I have all of it, right, the union, I want to find the number of pet owners that do not own neither a cat nor a dog. So I actually need to find the complement of the union. Now we do have a formula up here, right? The complement is the number of elements in the universal set minus the number in the set. So number of A complement is equal to the number in the universe minus the number in the set. So if I translate this to this piece here, then I see that this is my new set A. And I'm just going to replace a with C union D, but that complement superscript is there, and I just replace the base with that union. So this in this, so in this case, it would be the number of elements in the union, uh, the complement of the union C and D, is equal to the number in the universe minus the number of elements in the union. Okay, and then now it can get a little bit involved. So in two, where we do the Venn diagram, let's stop what we're doing on the left and kind of see um, if the Venn diagram would help first. So here's cat, here's dog, here's the universe. Uh, once again, I know that I surveyed 95, and therefore um, I do know that 13 owned a cat and a dog. Again, there's that word and, and I that would be the intersection. So like, once again, if 15 said they owned a dog, but 13 of those dog owners owned a cat as well. That means there was only two people in the survey that owned dogs only. Other than that, the rest owned a cat and a dog. So if you look at the set D, 13 plus two gives you the 15 that owned a dog. So using the cat, um, we know that out of the 16, nine that said they owned a cat, 13 of them owned a, a dog as well, which only leaves 56 to only have owned a cat only. This means if 95 people were surveyed and 56 and 13 and 2 owned a cat, dog, or both, then how many people are left to own not a cat or dog, like uh, everything else, like a bird, a snake, a rabbit, or a pig, right? Or something else, some other animal. Well, I would just take 95 and subtract the 56, the 13, and 2. And it doesn't leave many, but we do get a little bit. We get 24 people left to own some other animal other than a cat or a dog. 
So once again, if we know the total number in this entire piece here is 95, and 56 of them own a cat only, 13 own a cat and a dog, and two only own a dog, that only leaves 24 people in the survey to have owned some other type of pet. So now when I do this, I know that it's 95 minus the same exact thing we just did, looking at the union of C and D, right? So here, I'll draw the circle. Here's the union. Right, which would have been 56 plus 13 plus 2. And then if I did that in the calculator, I would get um, 95 minus 71, which leaves me with 24. So there are 24 people in the survey that did not own a cat or a dog. But you can see how um, the Venn diagram, like uh, for us in this case, notice that we use the formula here. Like, okay, we wrote it down, we did it, we have an idea, we had a really good understanding of the problem and the context and the situation. And then notice that we stopped, we didn't even do the formula yet. We went to the Venn diagram, oops. We went to the Venn diagram and kind of drew it all out. So when I got to the formula over here back on the left, then I was like, okay, I, I see what I need to do in the formula, boom. So ra rather than it working out cleanly like it did in this example 313, it may not always work out so cleanly where you have to kind of think about it a little bit more, like in the Albers Bothell. So it, you do what works for you. Again, this is just stuff to help you understand that everything is from a set and we think we ha we can't think outside on a tangent. Like puppies, remember the puppies and the peanut butter that went with colors. Like what we're trying to do is keep you in a more logical sense and a logical sense of reasoning so you can apply that in your life and in your in the world and making good decisions. So in this case, you know, if you need to mix it up, there's no like structured process. If you need to stop mid formula and say, you know what, I'm gonna draw this out and you draw it out, that is that is excellent. That is excellent reasoning and critical thinking skills because that's, that's what you need. You need to be able to visualize things as well as write things and then blend them to make a good decision. So once we got the Venn diagram going, notice it was like, boom, we see the answer. So, and that's why we, I don't want it to, I don't want this course to be so structured in that sense. I want you to be able to blend these ideas to be, to get to the right track and a good, um, you know, solution.